Welcome to this first of a series of videos for beginner programming using the Processing Programming Language. Uh, we'll be using Processing because it's a free and open source software which means you can download it for free and use it for whatever you like and it's also quite easy to get some nice graphical uh, programs going which is what beginners often want to do. Some of the other languages they, they take a bit more learning before you can do anything visually interesting. This series of videos will be targeted at people who have never programmed in any programming language before um, although occasionally I will make reference to uh, some learning that people may have got from about grade 7 mathematics, so in Australia that's about uh, age 13, 14, when we talk about variables. But overall you shouldn't really need any background learning to make sense of these series of videos. The videos themselves will be sh uh, fairly short and quite quick, so feel free to pause and rewind as many times as you need. They are deliberately faster than most beginners will, will really want to be able to keep up. I won't show you how to download and install processing. The instructions are quite clear on the website. I'll put the link in the video description below. The, um, the download and install instructions are, are reasonably straightforward. What I'm going to do with this video is basically show you around the development environment from a beginner's perspective. So we won't look at all the details, just the key bits you need to get going. So looking at the top of the window here, we can see we have the default file name. So when you start the program or create a new window, you get allocated a default file name. So it starts with the word sketch, which is what processing calls its programs because it's a visual graphical type language. And then a series of numbers, which is based on the date and a C to tell you which um, number of programs you've written for the day. It then tells us what programming, what processing version we're working with. So at the moment I'm working with 3.0.2, which is the current version. By the time you watch this, there may well be a later version out. Moving down, we have the run button. So when you write your code, you run it by pushing this button here. You then stop your code by pushing this stop button here. Moving across, we have two buttons we won't be using for a while. There's the debug button, which we can use when we're out but programs are behaving a bit strangely to step through our code and have a bit of a closer look at what's going on and we have the modes um, drop down so at the moment we only have Java mode installed you can add additional modes if you want to do things like write programs for Arduino or for Android or for JavaScript for embedded in web pages we won't be doing any of that for now but you can later on if you wish moving a little further down we have the line of tabs which obviously only has one tab in it for now when you're writing more complex programs later on, you may wish to add additional tabs to help your navigation. You can do that using this drop down here. Now we get to the main, uh, the main event, which is writing the code. This big white space here is where you write your actual program. Uh, programs are generally written in lines, and in this language they are, and those lines are numbered down the side here. So when you see error messages, they will talk about what line your program has the error on, and you can go and find that by looking at these numbers here. Moving a little further down, we have this grey bar here that when you have errors will turn red and tell you that you have an error. So if I type in my code, this is an error which is not actual processing programming language and it throws its hands up and says hey there's an error here. So it'll turn red and have some sort of guess as to what the error is and sometimes it'll make some suggestions as to what you might want to do about it depending on the type of error. Moving a little further down we have the this black space here is the console so you can make your program print text out to this area and our first program will actually do that. We can also change this region over from being the console to being a list of the errors. So at the moment I've typed a few errors in there, it's identified two of them and as you can see it tells you what the problem is, tells you what tab it's in, so at the moment we only have one tab, and what line it's on so you can navigate around your own code using this reference here and find where the problem actually is that's quite useful once your programs start getting a lot longer. And that's pretty much it. That's the, the basics you need to know to get going and start programming in processing. So follow the link that's about to flash up now and go and watch a video so you can write your first ever program using the processing programming language.